I am doing another video. It seems like I'm going to be doing tons of videos this week because it's very active. All right, I want to point a few things out. Number one, please do not DM me about the Cornex bot or the Scalp or Swings channel. That is in addition to what we do here. Um, that's the other traders. Uh, that is not I. Uh, I do not pay attention to uh, you know any of the, the bots or the those type of signals because it's not my trading. I, I focus on my own trading and uh, that's not going to change. Um, so please, uh, you know, go to the other admins and the other uh, support staff for questions that are related to the auto trading or the swing or scalp um, signals that, uh, you know, are outside of my purview. Um, what I do do, what I do do, <laughs> um, and my own trading, uh, you saw yesterday. And I have allocated money into the crypto space. I'm going to probably allocate more. I am shifting all of my uh, uh, stock trades now. I'm pretty much going to liquidate a bunch of stuff, including the Tesla short, so I can make more money available in the crypto space in case we get another down move. Um, so I'm going to take profits on the Tesla short, um, which is a big one for me. Um, I'm gonna have to do it early. No big deal. Uh, I'm, you know, pretty profitable on this one, but uh, my target's all the way down here. It kind of hurts to even close this one out. But I see bigger opportunities for, um, you know, larger moves to the upside on a percentage basis that make more sense. It makes it, it makes it more uh, wise use of capital across the board. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over and clean out everything in the, and then move money to the crypto space and to be ready. Now, is this a good decision? Uh, because it, it's kind of anti-diversifying, but not really because I'm going to diversify into other coins and uh, just be waiting for to take opportunity. So I'm moving my soldiers to, a, um, you know, to to pounce, you know, to uh, take advantage of an opportunity. <laughs> and capture land, as you would say. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what my, my plan is right now. I have already allocated on uh, this current move as much as I can. Um, we drop all the way down. And let me point out this cone right here. Uh, this cone has been fulfilled. It even went a little bit under it, right? Not by much, but it did go under it. Uh, this cone, you know, that I've had on the charts for months now, uh, was a projection, and if it was to get filled within the summertime, I would be fully invested back into uh, the market, and that's what I've basically done. As you've seen, as I've been saying in the room, as I've been buying under the 46K level and on down, I wanted to get back into Bitcoin fully. Now, I already had buys over here, 10, 10. I sold up here, bought back down here, so I had my 20% in there allocated. Then we got the move up here, 10, 10, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. Um, so as it um, went all the way down, I'm fully back invested in here. I, actually, a little bit more because of the profits that I had throughout the year, I did expand that. And that was about, I don't know, about 30 something percent additional. So, but that's because of the cumulative gains that I had from before. And that's another thing that people don't see is that as you compound your profits, you build up your account. And that doesn't, it's asymmetrical in nature. Sometimes it starts out slow and boring and you know you're just building building and building then you get a big move like this and it expands greatly and then you notice that your profitability after a period of time is much higher than what you were even uh, thinking in your mind that it could be because it's uh, antithetical in nature um, you know the profits they don't compute with your mind just like trading doesn't compute with your mind 
And then after the after effects of a longer period of time of doing the right things, you get the results and uh, you build up. For example, I, I knew a person that started with a, around 15 grand or something and uh, back in 2017 and um, you know they followed pretty much all of my trades. Some of them they took on their own. Um, and uh, But they were in alignment with my trades and they doubled their money within I think it was nine months so it went up to 30 and then that 30 went up to 63 and then it went up to 89 and then it's now it's I think he's up to 250 something 55 or something like that but anyway he's done exceptionally well over the years because they compounded and um, you know and my trading is boring uh, you know but it compounds and that's the thing that's the biggest strength that you could have if you make good trades and you build on them over time that is what's important that's why I tell people observe plan and execute and I, I give you the best mathematics in my opinion I mean the kind of mathematics and what I use and my knowledge, uh, I, MIT students would not even, even if they had a group of them that came together, uh, could not provide you with a better class because of, uh, oh man, that's that's terrible to say that. I shouldn't say that. I, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe there's some really great programming out there that I absolutely you know that's hidden that we know nothing about so I so I should retract that statement <laughs> but I've not seen anybody that is as accurate as me uh, or is able to use the correct combinations the combinatorial values of geometry time um, energy you know and, and to bring them all together because those um, uh, algorithms that I use uh, they are are a tool that has helped me and you know I'm spatially able to rationalize what the market is likely to do and this is pretty accurate right so we see where we ran all the way down here and we fulfilled this cone we went right down to this number down here to the low 30,000 range and even under it what was the low about 30,098 so Look at that. I want you to zoom in there. Look at that. So the accuracy of this is pronounced. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we saw the bounce up to 43. Um, there, that's very interesting. It kind of tells me something, uh, but I'm not going to go into that because I'm going to be guessing and that's not what we do here uh, I can tell you the long-term range of what I'm looking at now excuse me and let's go to the to that let's bring this out and let's boom all the way back up to here. This is what, you know, that I've stated before in other videos and I've touched upon several times is possible. Now, there's a good chance after we've retraced here that we're going to go all the way back up to the resistance zone and higher and uh, up to these levels, up to the old highs and maybe pull back again down to here and then make the bigger move all the way up to here but at some point during the summer we are going to snap back and start trending all the way back to this trend line until we hit at least that 118 894 and above now there are other levels that go uh, and expand and I'll show you them in the future but there they go from the 240 Leave. I'd have to go over and recheck that to see to make sure the numbers you know cord 
coordinates are correct. So I don't want to. Um, and then 360 is another one. And it stretches all the way up to around that. But this could, you know, this, I'm not going to say this period of time in which these numbers will get hit. But in the future, I believe it was somewhere around that 499, 500, let's say. 5230, somewhere around the 500 to 49, uh, 49,900 range. Uh, I'd have to go over and check, but anyway, there's a, a good chance after the minimum, this is your minimum, this could be up to your max up to here. So between this realm right here, um, before you would get the next move back down, uh, now, you know, this is um, going into kind of uh, this, I, I want to make it a projection, not a uh, prophecy, because people view this type of stuff incorrectly. You know, I, I don't know what tomorrow brings. I'm just giving you the statistics of what was likely to happen. And right now we've filled this cone ahead of time. And in grand fashion, we did it very quickly. So there's great violence, but it did it with speed. Now, that's something if you looked at historically through Bitcoin prices, when a correction happens, a strong correction with speed, extremely fast, what happens majority of the time after that, uh, given the different variables of volume, um, uh, its magnitude, the amplitude of uh, uh, the price action and the, and the trades that I'd have to go over and um, some of the statistics on the geometry that I've seen in, in this uh, pricing along with the time variables uh, I'll have to go over and uh, estimate that but um, what I'm basically saying there could be a sharp move back to the upside and that would freak everybody out and cause them to go into super panic uh, FOMO mode, and that, that is possible. Um, let's go back to the four hour, and let's let's zoom in even closer. Let's get a little, like a one hour. As you see where we are right now, we've gone back up to around 42. And now all the brokers are printing that. Yesterday, uh, only Coinbase was showing the spike back up to here. See that right there? Um, so this is the pivot that we see right there. And you know what my target is. If I just wanted a short-term trade, statistically, I can sell a lot of these buys that I have, that I dollar cost average when it was dropping, you know, um, uh, at this level and above and then look for a pullback back down to this and under. It, it ranges between 45 to 42 K and even maybe lower all the way down to the back to here. But I don't want to get into that right now. Um, what you're seeing right here is uh, not a dead cat bounce. It is a capitulation move and a snap back to the trend. And this is what I was looking to happen over a longer period of time. But again, charts are asymmetrical in nature. They don't happen when you want them to. Sometimes the energy is so intense and the price action happens within a very um, confined amount of time and space and not what you're looking for. You know, oh, it's going to do this between May and July. Well, maybe it just does it all in May skips the other two months <laughs> or maybe it does it in uh, May and June and then in July is just uh, it breaks through this uh, 59k level and keeps going higher and then breaks through the the old highs of the 65k which is possible a lot of newbie traders got smoked you know they over leveraged they did everything all the cardinal rules it's one of the reasons you'll start seeing probably numbers in the room dwindle this month, uh, they'll start to pull back because 
so many newbie traders got smoked. They over leveraged. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, their greed was their own. Majority of the time, uh, you know, you don't hear the story from traders. Uh, what really happens is they over leveraged and uh, they had ideas in their head of what, you know, trades were going to do what, and what you know, their own reasons. Um, and by doing so, they blow their accounts. Uh, this is indicative of that. And because of that, you know, that, that's why you get the snapbacks that go all the way up to here because pr price uh, stabilizes. They're out of the marketplace. They're no longer a um, negative. And the bigger money that uh, saw them is taking profits on them and it actually bought their cells. So now the, the money moves from the uh, poor, stupid people to the richer, um, whatever you want to call them. The, the, the term diamond hands now is popular. <laughs> it moves to those accounts. You know, the Justin Sons, if you saw the, the Justin Sun buying um, on the, the drop and so forth. Uh, you know, there are plenty of those traders out there, in my opinion, institutions that were waiting for this. And, you know, they're going to be all focused on anything that goes 38% from here all the way down to the 50%. They're going to be focused on that. They're going to, they were buying when everybody was panic selling, they were just buying the F out of it. Like me, uh, because they know, uh, well, they don't know. Uh, some of them just know the, the rational price, uh, you know, they're the, the pie slash uh, people that were taught good math in school and uh, they know good valuations of where it, to take risk and whatnot. It's not that complicated. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, so you get the snapback like what you're exhibiting here. Now, will it break back down and then continue lower? It might. But that's statistically neither here nor there. The, the greater stats within this period of time after we hit this number down here is that we will be able to then break through the old highs or test them at least, pull back and then break through the old highs. But by the end of the year, the big picture is this. And I said this, you know, I don't have to belabor this over and over that this is what we're looking for ultimately that's it that's the minimum target and then from there you know maybe it goes crazy and gets all the way up to the the two four you know the 240 50 and somewhere in this area up here again I'd have to go over and really um, zone in on those numbers but first I've got to see a break of this down here until that happens this is all, you know, um, well, the clock's ticking. So it's likely to happen within uh, that period of time. But I've shown you this, and I can't be any more accurate than what I am. Uh, this all is reminiscent of trades, I mean trades, of uh, prices and price action that I have seen in the past. And I, I've seen exactly where this leads to. And I've seen it in crypto and all of the boxes tick and I would be looking for this up here. End of story. That is it from this point on. That's all I'm going to do. So now I have to ask myself the biggest question of all. Uh, if I get the move back up to my target short term of the 49,000, do I take profits or do I just bring and hold and go for the gold? Hmm. Big conundrum, big conundrum. So I've got to got to think about that um, because there might be some good, but that's up to the charts, and I'll let them draw themselves out. If they show me that there's profitability to the downside on after we get the up move, um, then I might uh, might do that. I mean, it's right now it's already bounced back to 42k, so that's something. But eh, that's not a big deal. It gets back above this 46K and you're gonna have people screaming and yelling. It gets back above 49 or 50K, then people are gonna be freaking out. And that'll be fun to watch. 
Um, so anyway, I'm fully invested. You've seen what I was doing. Now let me bring up some other of the ones that you've been asking about. Uh, I had a few people PMing me yesterday and I told you the levels on uh, here and on uh, under 2200. I discussed this months ago. And I hope people remember. Uh, this is where you want to go to all the way down to that 1940 area, but you can see that on the chart over here on Ethereum. This is Ethereum. Um, XRP, this is one that I bought yesterday. Uh, this was a fantastic buy. It went under the 90, 88 cents, uh, 87, 90s. Uh, all this, this whole area was just perfect. And it, all you had to do is look at this right here, this one low here. Anything under that 87, um, 7, 8, um, on uh, XRP, uh, I fantastic. That's all I can say. Um, so that was a buy. Uh, and Litecoin. Now I've got plenty of Ethereum, so I didn't really need to do that. I have that from much lower levels, and I did not want to add any more to it myself personally. But Litecoin, I did. I, I and I did. And this was extremely liquid yesterday. This was fantastic. Didn't have any issues, funny enough. You know, usually I would expect uh, uh, certain exchanges to go out. Um, the number of hiccups and the number of hiccups that I heard from people were not that, that bad. Uh, only Binance had a little, a few problems. Um, but uh, if you have limit orders in place and they get executed and you already have them in place, it, it didn't matter. But uh, Everybody else was pretty solid yesterday. Um, so that has me thinking too. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, there was plenty of supply when people were selling. There were plenty of uh, supply available for buyers if you took advantage of it. And I think more than a few people did. This one over here went all the way down to this number right here, to 148. Um, uh, I got it at 156 and change, and this then spiked all the way back up to back up above this area here, which was the Wolfway, the 180s. So it made a great scalp trade if you wanted a very, very short term scalp trade, but that was more like on a minute chart. Here, let me show you what that looks like on a minute. And I noticed that too when this dropped and so forth, and it went down here. And one of the things I look for when I get exhaustion points is a high low. Uh, X to A, that's what I call this. Uh, oops, I went backwards, don't I? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Come on. It's about right, right there. Yeah, you have it backwards. All right, again, it's early in the morning. I'm doing it again. Fuzzy brained. Anyway, here it is right there. See that right there? That pullback that I was looking for? Your zero point over here. Then it drops here, and I knew I was missing something. I knew I was missing something. What am I missing? No, that, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, when you get a, a trade like this where there's exhaustion and um, you create certain conditions, uh, what I do is from the high to low, and you've seen this like an XRP in the past, uh, I calculate 61.8, it's two thirds of the, the range. Uh, once it goes to that on there, that, that is your, your retrace and you create a one, two, three. One, two, three. And then you go back to the trend line over here, ends the downtrend, and then you get the, the move that will generally be back above here. 
where your starting point is on your x to a. So, boom, boom, boom. You would look for a move back above here. And if you just wanted the scalp, I don't want this as a scalp. I want it to keep this as a longer trade. But if I was to have this over here as the buy, and uh, I got in at very good levels because I was actually focused more on this down here. One, two, three. I was interested in this pattern right here. And when I saw this break right there, I saw this down here. It, well, it was a, you know, a good trade. Um, I'm going way too in depth. <laughs> I'm showing you a five minute chart. Do you really want to see this? But this little pattern right here on the extremes, one, two, three, and then under this level right here, at this 157 and under, actually should have really tightened that up and got it under um, 154, but I had too much going on. Um, but I was happy with the price anyway. I'm not going to get crazy. Uh, it went all the way down to this uh, 146, 45 in there. Uh, prices were all over the place. So if you can get you know, executions, be happy with that. Um, there was so much uh, volume, it was not that hard to do, uh, surprisingly enough. Um, but anyway, uh, that was one trade here. And I'm just holding on to Litecoin. I'm not looking at short term. If I was the XA type of trade that goes all the way back up to here would be my, my target. 156 all the way up to 234. That would be a good profitability, I would say, wouldn't you? Um, but new, I want the breakout. I want us to go all the way back up. I want new highs. I want to see Litecoin above 700. <laughs> if I look at Litecoin, I want to see this sucker go all the way past its old highs. I want to see it way up here. Right around here. Let me draw a line. <laughs> this is ultimately where I would like to see Litecoin get to in the future. And we'll see. We'll see if we have that bang up winter that we get, you know, and I'll go from there. Uh, but we're just starting. And, uh, yeah, I think the big move is coming and nobody sees it. Nobody sees it coming and, uh, they're going to learn, they're going to learn the, the power of crypto and whatever. But, um, anyway, the whole point of this very long video that I'm making, I need more coffee because I'm not awake. Um, is this. This has happened. This is completed. I am fully invested <laughs> back in Bitcoin. I'm moving more money from the stock market into crypto, just in case we get a further pullback. Um, I'll weather my bear markets, I don't mind. And uh, if we continue past here and here and we break through here and people get freaked out we're going all the way back up to here that's the whole point of this video this is my end point target period and that's a minimum target there's a good likelihood we can get all the way higher than that and we can get some real craziness uh, remember the institutions are they're buying they're gonna buy any down moves and they're going to be holding. They're not like the average retail trader that does this crazy shit. They are not interested. They are not interested. Uh, what they're interested in is this. They're interested in this and this. They're interested, honestly, probably not even any of these. They're really interested in above here. They want to see the market. Uh, they want to see the market capitalization go to something similar to gold, which would not be un, uh, unlike uh, to do. I still, I still think it would be under if it was uh, 10 trillion. Um, 
Yeah, I think it would still be under, and we were we maybe looking at the six hundred thousand range before they would start to unload their profits. But they're still getting in, in my view, and they're going to be buying all the way on the way up as well. Um, so we'll see. But the minimum first before you know any of that. Uh, and let's see this. You know, first let's see this. Then we'll go from there. End of the year. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I'm right. In the, right. Uh, who cares if I'm right or wrong? All the, the, the numbers currently point to this, and we're going to get this breakout. We're just going to triangulate right back up to here. And that's the end of the story. Anyway, I am going to get some more coffee and um, wake up. And I hope you guys have a great week. And again, I, I don't do anything with the Cornix, but I trade my way. Um, you know, I, I've grown my account many times over. If you can do better than 100% a year, then, you know, and you build over time and you just make good trades and you repeat that over and over and uh, you build the right psychology. That's what's important in trading, um, honestly. And anything else about the Corn Xbox swing trades or the scalp trades, I, I don't do that. That's not me. That's the other person, persons. And uh, you'll have to ask them. Uh, so that's it. That's the end of my video. Talk to you guys later. Have a great week.